Hildron here from the CC, here today to talk about screens of death for the Mac. We'll get started with a pretty iconic one. The SAD Mac is pretty recognizable by just about everybody, and it was created with the original Macintosh. You would only see it if you had a startup failure. You can also see it on startup if you try to interrupt the system. There was a debugging console you can open up on the Mac, and if you tried to open it up while the system was booting, you would see the SAD Mac symbol. The SAD Mac symbol wasn't just an icon with this type of crash, but it also played a crash sound on startup if the system failed to boot, and it sounded a little bit like this. Different Macs at the time had different crash sounds. Another error that was introduced around the same time with the original systems was a system error, also known as the bomb screen. This did not show up on startup because it was not relating to a startup error. It only showed up if the system encountered a crash. And if you're lucky, the restart button on the window would let you restart the computer automatically. If not, you had to actually shut down the computer yourself and then turn it back on. Those error screens lasted for quite a long time, but when the Mac system was rewritten with OS X, a kernel panic was the type of screen that displayed error information. So if the system entered a state where if it continued to run, it would most likely get corrupted, it caused itself to crash and it would display error information for the user. However, most people did not understand what any of this meant, so Apple simplified it along the way. In version 10.2 of OS X, this type of kernel panic was displayed. If the crash was severe enough, it would display log information, but most of the time a user would just see this, and it's a lot more simple. It tells them they need to restart their computer, and that's really all they need to know. This design lasted for quite a while, it just had a little bit of a color scheme change. This design, specifically with the color scheme change, lasted in version 10.3 to 10.5, and most likely with the previous one as well, it had an animation like this. When the system failed, the screen would dim, and the error screen would show up like this. Snow Leopard and Lion, also known as 10.6 and 10.7, had the same type of error screen, except the Kernel Panic had one additional language on the error screen itself, and that language is Spanish. In the most recent version of OS X, Mountain Lion, or version 10.8, the Kernel Panic is actually quite a bit different. Not only does it say different information, but it actually has some good features built in for users. If the system crashes, it will automatically reboot. The kernel panic isn't shown on the system itself while you're using it, unlike the previous kernel panics. What it does instead is it shows up when the computer is rebooting, and it will automatically dismiss itself after a few seconds, or you can press a key to continue. And when the computer starts up successfully, you're prompted to resume your session. So the computer will try to get as many applications and files you had opened during your last session, and it will try to reopen them for you and get your system back to normal before it had the crash. This is a kind of simulation for it. If you're using Mountain Lion and a kernel panic occurs, the system will most likely completely freeze for a couple seconds. It will turn off and automatically reboot. You'll hear the startup chime and see the gray screen, and then that's when the kernel panic will show up. If you wait a few seconds, it will dismiss itself, or you can press a key to get it dismissed right away. And if there are no other system problems, the Apple logo will show up, and the system will continue normally. The prohibitory sign was introduced in OS 10.2, this type of error, however, has been around for quite some time, but this icon was introduced in 10.2. If you're using an older system, you'll probably see a broken folder icon instead. This means the system cannot start up because of a system file being damaged, or there's very incompatible software. For example, if you have 10.8 installed on an external hard drive, and you try to force boot it on a computer that it is not compatible with, you will most likely see this symbol. The blinking question mark is also a type of icon that most people don't want to see. Usually, it just means the system volume cannot be found. And on older versions of the system, there was a blinking question mark on a floppy disk that was telling the user you need to insert a floppy disk to continue booting. That was back when we didn't really have hard drives in the computers, and you would just boot off of the system on the floppy disk. However, the scary thing about this type of error is, it doesn't just mean a system volume can't be found, but if you have a volume plugged into your computer, whether it be internal or external, and this shows up, the hard drive is most likely dead, and that would mean hard drive failure. So those are the screens of death for the Mac, and hopefully the only time you see them is by watching this video.